Aloha! It's 365Y with Eric and Julie Zemelis, and today we are coming from our Lanai here in Kona. And we are talking about Aloha. And why are we talking about that today? Well, I can start out. Well, we, we first of all, we read a, a newspaper article today that said that there are record-breaking people coming to the Hawaii Islands. And so this might be a good chance to start out what is Aloha, why, all those kind of things, what you can do, all of the basic parts about Aloha. Right, and for those of uh, our viewers who um, live here, mm -hmm. um, another part of it is that the article that came out of Honolulu. Now this is Honolulu. I think sometimes we're different here on Big Island. Um, they're saying that the, um, the welcome mat is wearing thin from the visitors uh, coming to Hawaii uh, and the people who live here are saying, you know what, uh, Southwest and your Low fares. Your $182 fares to Hawaii. Yeah. We had 800,000 people visit Hawaii in April. So I can tell already that there's a lot more visitors here. And now it's mid-June. And uh, that's why we want to bring this to you now. Because we also want to let you guys know, um, you know, about what's happening in Hawaii. And this is now coming up in conversation with a variety of people who are either coming here, um, hoping for an amazing experience. And those of us who are here wanting to provide what people love about Hawaii, and that is a, a sense of community in Aloha. Yeah. So um, we, I actually wrote a blog post about this about six weeks ago. Um, it's called the um, Seven Steps to Show Respect and Appreciation When Visiting Hawaii Island. Um, and uh, we are going to talk to you a little bit about those steps. Uh, but we wanted to give you some backstory about why we created it. And also, Eric was saying, why are we able to talk about Aloha? And that, that, that's a good question. And the answer is we've been here since 2010 and we've learned a lot of things. We may not have lived here from since day one and we might not be locals, but we uh, at least are, are attempting to show something that, that uh, a side that, that the people on the mainland not be able to see. Um, and also, you know what, you guys, um, when Eric and I first got here, in fact, we came here first in 2005, uh, nobody was talking really about like, you know, bring your aloha with you to the islands. We thought aloha, I think, was basically a concept of like, you know, aloha, aloha, true truly is, is more of a sense of respect, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when anyone comes here, you, you can be here, born here, or be here for five minutes. Respect for the culture and the eye and the, and the ocean is always... And the people. And the Every, people. Everything. You it's know, all in there. You, you, you just there. need to uh, come from a sense of uh, humbleness. Right, 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 right. And also realize that uh, um, there is a thriving culture here that um, when you understand Hawaii, uh, Aloha, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, um, why it brings a deeper sense of appreciation for the time that you spend here. And it also helps uh, create better relationships with the people who are coming and going from this island. And with that, let's get started. The first part is understanding Aloha. And you had a, you had a good definition of that, Julie, to start with. Okay, the definition of aloha, just because you guys, people say it means goodbye and hello. Well, absolutely, that's not actually what it means. It really means the breath of life, the presence of life. And um, it's no, it's good to know that because there's a kind of like a spiritual aspect of aloha, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people say it's also, so when we talk about this in our, our video, um, it's basically also a way of life and how to treat other people and the world around you with respect and dignity um, because it's all in life. It was kind of like you're connected to everything else. So therefore you have to, you know, you have to be, you know, be, be nice to the world, be nice to the Aina and be, you know, have, and the animals and all that. And it'll all come back and they'll all be nice to you. It's a, almost a little bit of the, uh, um, idea that uh, what you put out is what you get. Right, and we also talk about in 365 Hawaii, the circle of aloha, when um, it's kind of like a spiritual essence of uh, when you do nice things for other people, it comes back. And uh, one thing that's nice about uh, being on the islands is that um, people will say, what's the favorite thing they love about this island? And they say it's the people. And they love the people because they treat each other um, as if we live on an island where we all have to be part of each other's lives and you never know when it all comes around. So. Aloha can also be about making sure that you're doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. Yeah. And um, so, so starting off with that concept, that's basically the aloha that we're talking about and why you bring that with you to the island. And that's why when you live here, you also 
practice aloha. Yeah, and you and you, it's almost like you have to continue that because if you're here and don't, then you're the guy. You're the guy that drops the ball. So it's one of yeah. those. And, 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 and Paley will kick you out of the <laughs> kick you that, off the island. And this is this is what this video is kind of about: is to say that everybody coming here, whether you whether you be visiting or whether you're coming to live here, that you need to pick up the ball and carry the, that part of aloha, so it can continue, so the spirit can continue on, and we don't lose it to the California ways or whatever you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so number two of showing respect and appreciation for um, Hawaii when you're visiting um, is Malama Aina, which is respect for the land, but also for the wildlife here in Hawaii. Right. And the, the the start of that is one thing that everybody tends to miss here is that they believe that they can just kind of go anywhere they want. And uh, it, like that waterfall that's way out there and it's on private property, you have to go through a lot of places to go there, people do, but that's not respect and that's not aloha at the end of the day. Right. And the problem with that though, is that, you know, we were talking just earlier about that it also causes problems that, you know, a lot of people get hurt going to these places because there's a reason that they're not they're not open to the to the public is because, you know, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, so number one is of course, not going where you're not supposed to do and respecting. The land the and land. also uh, the landowner. And the landowner. And then we wonder, we wonder why um, patience wears thin sometimes with people visiting the island when they uh, intentionally uh, cross over uh fences um, and also uh, maybe park right in front of other people's places uh, without really, uh, you know, just kind of saying it's all about me and I'm on vacation and it doesn't matter. So that's not a low hop. But yeah, that's not that's not being one with everyone else. Okay. And then the other one that goes along with that is the uh, marine life. And uh, I got a good, good example of that. Uh, we have uh, uh, the monk seals here, the Hawaiian monk seals, and they're very rare. I don't know how many they are now, but for a while there was less than 10. And we rarely get them here in the on the big island. If you see one, that's pretty good. And, and over the last few years I've seen three and just a few weeks back we were down at the beach and there was a mother and two pups and the pups were playing in the water and it was just amazing to see but they've also had a lot of problems with people harassing them and doing things like that so that's another one of those cases that you need to have respect for the marine life to, right to and do that's that well. uh, staying uh, back from monk seals not swimming with dolphins aggressively not swimming with the man as aggressively when you're in the ocean you're with a guy that says basically Watch and don't touch. And the, um, and the turtles are another one of those. Yep. Uh, staying back Watch, from turtles. Don't, yeah, don't touch the turtles. <laughs> That's not good for that. So these you, you don't want to be that guy that has a picture of yourself or a video of yourself up on social media. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that, but under social media a little while ago, the DLNR got the guys that were uh, sw twenty of them that were swimming hard after the dolphins, and that is that the swimming with the dolphins is not allowed. Anymore. Or worse yet, slapping a uh, monk seal. Yeah, that would that, that would be was good. Bad. Don't yeah. be that guy. Show but, aloha. But there's more than that about respect as well. And what was the other ones you wanted to get to? Um, the um, oh, also the um, uh, stay on designated paths, uh, respect the wildlife, and refrain from removing or damaging any natural resources. Um, that's also taking lava. Right. And, and this goes. And we talked about this before. Is that there's there's <laughs> there's a whole group of people that say I would love to take a piece of lava home on my from my vacation, and then they do. And then re remember, lava has an energy to it, and uh, a lot of people, uh, from my understanding, I don't know if this is true or not, but they say it's made out of kind of a silica, and so it's almost like a crystal, right? So it has it has uh, um, powers, right? Uh, whether you believe it or not, it is what it is. And they take these lava, and the bad things happen when they take the lava because most of the time that it's presumed the lava does not want to come off the off the island and so you know people have bad luck they break bones all kinds of things so have that happened to that yeah. so the answer is and then they, they try to send it back and i guess you know the post office has got large amounts of these lava pieces trying to get back on top because of it. energetically so, mm -hmm. you took it without permission and it is not yours <laughs> Okay, number three is connecting with community. Hey, so when you visit Hawaii, connecting with community to show Aloha spirit is a way to also understand more of the culture. And that you can do by going to uh, different uh, presentations around the culture, like going to hula ex you know, experiences, uh, attending festivals, um, getting a chance to actually really dig deep and understand more of the Hawaiian culture, because that's the reason why people come here is to see a different way of life. But you can also do that with local businesses too. It doesn't just have to be the, the cultural things. It's 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 sort of, it, I guess you could say it's almost interacting with, uh, with, with uh, uh, the people that have been here a long time. Right, and it's, you're right, it's not just Hawaiians. It's yeah. also people who have spent time here making something of themselves on this island. And that includes local artisans and farmers. I I would say I, I would definitely say it was interesting because we we've just did the farmers market tour mm -hmm. and how many farmers are and, and how 
how they are ingrained in, in the in the culture and the earth and everything else that goes on. That right, and they feed the island. Yeah. <laughs> and they you know, really obviously, um, part of the community of this island is the way that people support one another, and that is through uh, feeding them and providing services and everything else. So one way is that you can learn more about you know what we're doing here is um, taking farm tours yep. and going in and like we're talking about the farmers markets, go in and talk to the people who are actually you know selling things, and you will learn so much about this island from talking to the people who actually live here. Yeah, and right? it, it definitely beats things like Costco too. For, right, for you're else. not going to learn a lot about commercial. Well, you probably, some of the people who actually work there, you probably can learn some yeah. from them too. But getting a chance to actually, um, you know, support the community by um, going in and taking these tours. And we're talking about responsible tourism mm -hmm. and regenerative tourism. And yep. that way, when you're supporting the economy of the local island, you're supporting the people, which then supports the island in general, which is a way of showing aloha. <music> The fourth step for showing aloha appreciation for the island is cultural sensitivity. Yep, and so um, when you guys come to uh, Hawaii, um, and those of us who live here, um, it's all about really, it's it's about the history, about yeah. the Hawaiian history, and um, there are a variety of different places that you can go and learn more about what the cultural has to offer, which and, is women, the state and national historic landmarks are one of them. And by learning about this 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 uh, the history of what happened here. You learn a little bit about the people, and the more you look at history, the more it makes sense of where they where they come from. Right. Uh, an example of that is place names. Right. Uh, everybody talks about uh, place names uh, that are very important to the Hawaiians because it, it it tells about what happened many years ago, and it gives uh, um, it, it gives reverence to those people from from before. Right. Right. So you know, cutting off names is kind of cultural and inappropriate. Right, so when you see words like uh, White Sands Beach, it's La'a Loa, and understanding La'a Loa means very sacred, is part of the experience of learning more about the Hawaiian culture. And um, one of the things about going to these different cultural sites is that there are places you can talk to the docents or you can read, because the more that you learn while you're actually here on the island, looking at different historic sites, the more, again, that you'll have appreciation for the culture. And it, it adds value to why you came here to begin with. Yeah, and that brings us back to the part of how aloha is woven into all of this thing. So the more you understand about where the Hawaiians come from, the more you understand where the word aloha comes from. Right, and also um, we go back to showing respect, and that is understanding what kapu means. <laughs> and kapu is a big one. Uh, a, a, a kapu means do not enter, right? I mean, and it means usually it means sort of it's a sacred place, and that you are not if if it's written there, you are not the one supposed to be entered. Right. It says kapu, and that means don't don't go up there. Yeah. Don't get the funny idea to go up those steps anyway and go mess around at the top because you are not eight loud. And um, <laughs> you know, seriously, there is nothing more disrespectful to the Hawaiian culture when you just walk right by one of those kapu signs. Um, it's yeah. almost like you guys seriously, it's like walking on grave sites in America. And yeah, I don't I, think that, it's definitely considered. Yeah, that. people don't sometimes understand that there's a, a deeper under like we joke about the fact that Americans don't understand like respect for the land and stuff. Well, and I, but and when you come here, you go, yeah. okay, you got to be careful about where you're going and what you're and, doing. And I think this goes back to most places in America are not that old, right? So yeah, you, you would yeah, not. There's yeah. not. There's no history behind it, and you know, and they never knew anything about the Native Americans or something like this. But here on that piece of land for the last thousand years, something has gone on. So be careful about stepping on it. Right, right, and um, that also means uh, don't move around like um, rocks that might be next to a heyow. And uh, we talked about this before in another video, uh, rock stacking. That is definitely not a culturally sensitive thing to do. Right, and that's on the beaches, don't stack rocks, because um, if it wasn't there to begin with, keep everything in its natural environment. And right. that way you show that you are showing respect to um, the area. Well, we discussed cultural sensitivity and knowledge about what is available here on Hawaii Island in terms of learning more about Hawaiian culture and history. Um, please look in the um, description below, and I'm going to put links to some of our uh, historical spaces um, that you can find all over the island, and you can learn more about what is really special about this island and uh, you'll also get a really good opportunity to see um, some great artifacts and uh, spaces that are uh, very important for Hawaiian history. Okay, number five is the shaka. Right, and uh, we want to um, save you from embarrassment by making sure that you really understand um, the shaka and how to throw it because uh, there's nothing worse than a, uh, than, a, than a tourist that comes in goes like this, hey. Yeah. So, so I guess the first question is, do people actually use shakas here in Hawaii? And the answer is yes, but it's not in the traditional sense that Julie just talked about. It's more of an acknowledgement of, of, of understanding. And, like, and also acknowledging a kindness that was kindness, given to somebody. Yeah. Right. yeah. On top of that, a good example is if somebody's letting you in in a, in a line of cars and you're zipping in and, 
and they let you and then you give them just a shaka but it doesn't have to be the wave of shaka it could be just kind of a simple understanding and if you don't, can't don't feel comfortable that, just give them for hi you know yeah, what I mean? yeah you have to like do the other yeah. thing but i'll tell you guys a funny story when eric and i first got here uh we were the classic people who went nah. and uh we started watching what the locals were doing and uh it was more of kind of like a mm. so we started going okay how is this going and it became like this thing that we were doing for like six months trying to actually throw a shaka the way that most people do who want to fit in and it's definitely give them give them time with it's just more of a it's kind of more of a straight just the simple you know you don't have to cup it too hard it's not you know it's not overdone it's just a simple just a little bit of a little thing that goes on there yeah because uh, i put this blog post uh, that i wrote about this in my kona newbies group and a bunch of newer residents said well what's the real way to throw shaka correctly and everyone said someone should do a video on that so here's that video that it is not this like that's a hang loose hawaii thing from 1976 um just pull yeah, just a, just simple, right. and uh, and again, used you can use it, uh, you know, like hey, it's it can almost use it's kind of like a, a, a an acknowledgement, a wave or something like that. But, right, and they say it's a, it's the quintessential gesture that embodies the spirit of aloha because basically you're showing gratitude to somebody else who might have done something for you, but also it's a nice greeting between people who just say hey, you know, hey, hey. You know, it's just boom. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you want to know more about how the shock sign uh, began, I will also drop that in the description as well to get a little history about the shock sign. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this video by discussing patience. And you can imagine when 800,000 people show up <laughs> in one month in Hawaii, patience is needed uh, by the people who actually live here as well as the people who visit here. And under, uh, let's, let's, let's back up. Understand that this is not the mainland. It is a different different place. And uh, we have a hard time just getting normal things done with no people, let alone adding a whole bunch of people to things. Right. And I, I hear that um, the mainland is suffering from some of the same issues. That yeah. We so have. at least you guys have an understanding of what's right. like over Lack here. Lack of staffing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a little overcrowding, um, be, not being that guy that knows that you have to stand in line, decides just to dart out and go around because when you're doing the going around thing, you're probably not on the path. You're probably pissing people off. You're definitely not showing aloha and no one's going to throw you a shaka. That's for damn sure. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know what, um, being respectful of other people means sometimes taking three deep breaths. And uh, being able to say, you know what, everyone's trying to enjoy the same thing that you're trying to enjoy. And I, I always give this example, and I'll give it again. Uh, when And it's also includes in driving and, and, you know, people letting you in, you definitely give them a shock and let the, the things are go. And also let somebody in. You know what I mean? You don't have to cut them off. This isn't the main line. It's not a race. And right. it, the funny part is every time somebody tries to race around to get ahead and get get it down, you always see them at the end of, like, example, they're going up to the resorts, they pass everybody trying to get there, and they still get there within 30 seconds. Yeah, faster. and sadly, just recently, we had a head on a car accident on Saddle Road when um, somebody trying to pass somebody going yeah. 65 miles an hour hit another car. Where do you have to be that fast? Because we don't have freeways. Remember, they're all kind of two lane roads. A couple right. freeways in Hilo, but not many. Yeah. So I think like also nice the thing about showing Aloha, when you do have things like we have these two lane highways and you can go 35 miles an hour, is understanding that people are doing their best. They're driving as they can. Um, you know, I know that sometimes people who are visiting like to do a little rubbernecking, looking around, but realize that people are trying to get to work. And this happens in Hana, too, in Maui, that people behind you who know the roads a little faster and they're trying to get to work, they want to move things along. So yeah. keep in mind that that's another thing. If so you if you got respectful, it, or, and if you got somebody coming up fast, you know, let them go. Right. You know or, I mean? or, or get over into a safe place and pull over and let them go in front of you. Yeah. Um, because that's going to make your life a little bit easier. And also those who actually live here, uh, getting all the copacetic experiences about, you know, people coming and people who live here. Um, also... Um, with the patient's experience is that um, knowing that uh, leaving and being part of the experience, you might be having to sit in the airport for a while as well. We've been hearing stories about some of the airlines having some flight issues. So um, be kind to our staffers. The and the stewardesses. And the stewardesses, else, yeah. the people at the front desk. Yeah. Um, anytime that something happens to you at the hotels, whatever, going nuts on somebody who's working there, Obviously, it doesn't work and this, in the mainland. The, it doesn't work here at and all. And this goes all about the aloha. How would you like to be in their position? I guess aloha is, is, is the understanding that you and the other person are the same. And if you're screaming at them, you're screaming at yourself. And you don't want to be screamed at. That's not very good. Right. Or, you know, you don't want to be give, rule. Or giving them that eye that says, what the heck kind of thing. You want to just say, okay, we're, we got this. We're, it, aloha is kind of, we're all in this together. Right. And um, you will have a better experience of being in Hawaii when you are being treated fairly and, and, and nicely by the person you're interacting with um, because you're not you know, doing the whole, like, you know, where's mine, snap, snap. So um, we just wanted to share that with all of you because we also um, 
you know, create community through our 365 uh, Kona Newbies group and also by doing the 365 Things to Do in Kona uh, Facebook group. Um, and so we also, you know, make it a point to try and give information like this to people to improve their stay. And also for people who are thinking about moving here, the opportunity to realize that we do live in a different culture and it's one of aloha and yeah. patience. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Um, do you have anything else to, to wrap this up with? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that it's just one of those things that if you can kind of come here with an open mind and understand it's different and sort of you're trying to embrace the culture here and not bring your culture to it. And if you can do that, we can sort of keep this spirit alive. And it, it's the one thing that everybody really likes by coming here. Right. I mean, they say come, the people are really nice. Yeah. The, 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 they say, yeah, the beaches are great, but man, the people are great. And that's how we're doing it. And that's kind of what this video is about is trying to keep you guys uh, an understanding to keep that Aloha alive as much as possible. Right. And if I do have a point for you. You guys um there is a thing called the pono pledge and i'm going to again drop that into the description um and by taking the pono pledge basically it kind of is a, it talks about a lot of the things we talked about today yeah but it basically just makes sure that by you staying safe mm -hmm. by being respectful and being aware um it makes your life here a lot funner for your vacation and it makes better for people who actually are trying to and around it you. too everybody around you too on top of that yeah right so, so with that we'll say oh wait but we weren't going to say that yet. We're going to say first, if you do like this video, please subscribe. We always have a lot of good content. And now I'm starting to realize we've got a lot of videos. So if you want to go back and look at some of the other stuff we've done, it's a lot of interesting things. You can type it in and find out whatever information you want. Right. we got hiking. we got biking. we got the whole schmeal. If you want to like learn how to do fun things on the island, we've got a ton of videos to show you. Um, also, we're realtors with KW uh, Big Island. And if you uh, find yourself uh, needing something to do in terms of buying real estate, please check out 365hawaiiliving.com. And I'll drop that also in the description. And um, hopefully if you guys also want to learn more about what's coming up on the island in terms of an events calendar, um, you can send me your email address and be part of our email list um, and get monthly updates on what's coming up uh, to do on Big Island. And with that, we'll, we'll say, say aloha. aloha.